Hi friends, I wanted to talk to you for a few moments about what it means to enter into the rest of God. Now listen, all of us had our world kind of come to a screeching halt several weeks ago, uh, not by any act of our own choosing. We, we, in fact, for many of you, you're probably missing out on sports, missing, maybe some of you missed out on graduations, and so it really is a sad situation where all of a sudden, uh, not by your own choice, your world was forced to come to a, a grinding stop. And so even the idea of talking about rest, you might say, well, hang on, all, all I've been doing is kind of resting and loafing around, or, 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 or your rest is sort of the rest of grief. It's, it's this feeling of saying, I, didn't, I don't want this. I was forced to kind of stop. But the Bible actually introduces us to a kind of rest that we choose, that we embrace for our own sake and because of what it does in us in our relationship uh, to God. And so I want to just talk to you about the reasons for this, okay? So sometimes we can, we're not aware of how much of our, the world around us is always calling for our attention. Maybe it's our uh, phones dinging with alerts or notifications. Maybe it's friends asking uh, if we can come do this or that. Or maybe it's like pings of news alerts. And w without realizing it, we're conditioned to constantly be reacting and responding to the world around us. And, and there's probably a couple of ways that we can respond to it. One is just to feel absolutely overwhelmed by it all that we can't even uh, move. Maybe the other way, if you're wired this way, is to say, well, fine, I'll just turn it all into a to-do list and I'll just crunch through it and I'll power through it, I'll get it all done. Or maybe your approach is to say, I'm just gonna ignore it all and play another round of this or that game. But the scripture invites us to a kind of rhythm that says let's work and let's rest or rather let's begin with rest and then work. And so in the Old Testament there is a concept called Sabbath. And it's introduced to us really in Genesis when it says that God rested after creating the world. But the people of God are instructed in this at two, two moments in the Old Testament. The first is Exodus 20 verse 8 through 11. This is God speaking to the people of Israel after they've been rescued and it says, Remember the Sabbath day and treat it as holy. Six days you may work and do all your tasks, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Do not do any work on it, not you, your sons or daughters, your male or female servants, your animals or the immigrants who is living with you. Why? Verse 11. Because the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything that is in them in six days, but rested on the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So first of all, we rest because God rested. There is a sense in which our rest reminds us of God's work. It reminds us that everything you see in the world around you is here because God made it. God set it in motion so we can rest because God rested and that cues our imagination back to the creation story and says, oh, wait, wait a minute. I am not the creator and sustainer of all things. In fact, our rest in a way reminds us of God's very work in the world. But the second time this Sabbath command is issued to the people of Israel shows up in Deuteronomy 5. It's a whole new generation now. And in Deuteronomy 5 verse 12 it says, Keep the Sabbath day and treat it as holy, exactly as the Lord your God commanded. Six days you may work and do all your tasks, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Don't do any work on it. This is all similar phrases now to the Exodus stuff. Not you, your sons or daughters, your male or female servants, your oxen or donkeys, or any of your animals or the immigrant who's living among you, so that your male or female servants can rest just like you. Now, here, a different rationale is given for why you should rest. Verse 15, remember that you were a slave in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out of there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm, and that's why the Lord commands you to keep a Sabbath day. So the first reason was we rest because God rested, and now the second reason is we rest because we are free. We're free. So often we feel like we owe someone something and we've got to do this because our parents are saying this or our teacher's saying this or our coach is saying this and so got to, got to, got to and we're on this endless treadmill. But the scriptures want to remind us that we don't live as slaves. We don't have harsh taskmasters saying you have to get this done. You don't have to live with a performance mentality. This concept that your identity or even your worth is wrapped up in your performance. That if you don't get these kinds of grades, if you don't make this team, if you don't uh, make the cut for this thing or that thing, then you're worthless. 
I want to encourage you to stop for a moment and think about who the taskmasters are in your own mind. Who are the pharaohs in your own heart that say, you better, and if you don't, then you won't. In what ways do you kind of live like you're in bondage? How could the Sabbath be an invitation to actually live like you're free? All right, so what does this look like? Let me give you four practical ways for what this can look like in your life. First of all, a Sabbath involves stopping. <laughs> it involves ceasing from all the, thing that, all the things that are work or that are a labor. So it, look, for some of you, that might mean turning your phone off. It might mean uh, deleting some apps. It might mean putting some time limits on your screen time. It might mean leaving your computer closed. It, it might mean ignoring certain to-do lists and saying, you know what, on this 24-hour period, I'm just going to stop. But it's not just stopping because otherwise, if it's just stopping, that could turn into sort of lazing around and sloth. It also involves, secondly, rest truly resting. Resting is different than, uh, than vegging. You know, resting is trying to actually do the thing that will allow you to catch up on sleep, maybe catch up on, on eating better or, or exercising. That might sound like an oxymoron that exercise could be rest, but it's the kind of thing that replenishes. And then thirdly, it can look like play or delight. So much of our life is filled with the have-tos. Uh, Sabbath can be an occasion for a get-to. Uh, what do I get to do today? I, I think I am going to get some ice cream today. I think I am going to uh, check on some friends today. What is a, a, a sense of play that recovers the joy and the delight in God's good world? Um, in fact, there is a sense in which when you think about God in the creation story, stepping back and looking at the world he's made and saying, oh, this is good, this is beautiful, this is excellent. There's a sense of his own delight in his world. And Sabbath invites us into that same delight to say, God, look at the world around me. Maybe the Sabbath is when you go on a hike or go fishing or enjoy something that brings you delight. And then fourthly, the Sabbath is also a moment to renew your soul. Very often in the Gospels, Jesus would heal on the Sabbath and sometimes the religious leaders would get kind of upset about it and say, wait a minute, you can't do this, you're, you're breaking the law here on a technicality. And Jesus is saying, you don't understand, man was not made for the Sabbath, the Sabbath was made for us, for human beings. And what is it that Jesus often did on the Sabbath? He healed. That's a picture to us, that's a sign to us that the Sabbath is meant to renew our own soul. It's supposed to bring healing. And this is why it's not purely a day off, it's not purely just resting or just taking a break. It's also time to delight in God's presence so that your soul can be renewed. In fact, one of the ways to understand this image of God resting on the seventh day is not God sort of collapsing from exhaustion, but rather the Hebrew idea of God's glory filling the temple, God's glory resting in the temple. And so there's a sense in which Sabbath is that time to lean into your relationship with God, to say, Ah, oh, Holy Spirit, what do you want to say to me today? Jesus, draw me close to you today. Now, finally, just, a, just some, some uh, you know, kind of exhortations for you. Don't be um, overly strict or legalistic about it. Adapt it to your own life and yet be intentional with it. Make it a discipline. Anything that is worth growing in is worth being intentional about. Most of the things we acquire skills at in life require persistence and patience. And the New Testament does urge us to make every effort to keep growing. So I wanna encourage you to embrace the gift of Sabbath, enter into the rest of God, and watch how God will use it to draw you close to Him and to renew your soul so that you can love Him with your whole heart and love others as yourself. God bless you, take care.